Yeah, because they are thinking of ah, what do I get in return? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What's in what's in it for me? Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And not what can this do to help the homeless person under the bridge, the person who is diagnosed with leukemia, cancer, you know, mm -hmm. mental disorders or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or starting a community bank mm -hmm. where people can have their own banking system, mm -hmm. their own stock market, all that type of stuff. That's the blessing. Yeah. That's the blessing. Yeah. I think that's also the case where, you know, sometimes if we see the news saying that the, the U.S. is doing well, the stock market is doing well, um, so, but we have to realize, like just now what Pastor just mentioned, the, the people who have access to the stock market is like only the top 10-20% of the people. Yeah. Very so if you say the country is doing well based on the stock market is doing well, it's the top people who are doing well. Yep, that's right. And when you're not doing well, stock market begins to decline. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Yep. And people, I've learned over the years that the stock market is based on emotion. <laughs> yes. It really is. If the president of the United States gets emotional or says something, automatically people go to the Dow's, to the yeah. stock market. How does, yeah. it affect my, how does it affect my money? Uh-huh. Business transition. Yes. Wow. Well, well, I'm so happy that you were able to bless that person because they are very, 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 very happy. I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I think yesterday uh, <laughs> she, she was very appreciative about uh, us accompanying her, and then uh, uh, I actually had to skip lunch because there there wasn't any lunch for me. Over there at the car dealership with her processing and then explaining to her the documentation and all those things. Mm -hmm. um, so she was uh, yeah, very appreciative. So I said, yeah, just enjoy the new car, you know, because she said, you know, my kids, they are taking picture of the car and then uh, sending sharing with their friends. They are little girls, like uh, grade four, grade five girls. Right. And I said, yeah, so enjoy the, the fun in it, you know. Yeah. And look what it, look at what it's doing to those little those little young women, those little girls. Uh -huh. What is it? What is the image it's building for them? I can I can have what I, I desire. Anything, yeah. I can yes. have nice things. I can have beautiful things. So uh, yeah. at first, the the mom was uh, asking the girls, but the girls were very quiet at first, not responding because the mom was like, "Do you like the car? Do you like the car?" You know, mm -hmm. and the girls were very quiet. Because I guess they didn't know how to respond. So when the mom went away, I told the girls, I said, look, you have to tell your mom, yes, it's a nice car. I like the car. You know, thank mm -hmm. you, mom, for buying the car for us. So we have a good time. Right. Uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so the girls started responding. The next time when the mom asked, she said, yeah, mom, red is nice. I like this car, very big. Right. It's a bit tall for me, but it's okay. <laughs> Because they're a bit short, right? So right. after they said to climb up, they said, yeah, it's nice. So they start responding and I can see that uh, the so-called the, the happiness is, you know, multiplying. So it was good. That's a blessing. That is a blessing. What a great praise report right there. Mm. And just to know that you helped them assist helps you that much further in what you're desiring. So um, I'm just thinking, you know, universe, thank you very much for this experience. I share with my friend, you know, or she let me share with her, her buying experience. Next mm -hmm. one is my turn. Right. <laughs> I'm buying a Tesla. <laughs> right, right. If you're going to do it, go with a Tesla. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that is such a blessing. Mm -hmm. Such a blessing. Yeah. So we, have uh, we will get into our lesson. Okay. And we bless everyone, or we can wait till tomorrow and wait for everyone. What do you want to do? Yeah, what happened to everybody else? <laughs> I don't know. Anson never replied. Uh, I texted him last. He he uh, texted me on the WhatsApp last night and asked uh, me a question. So we talked last night. So maybe he's still sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I. Okay. Another piece of news is that Adrian. 
Mm. Adrian was initially offered as an assistant manager. Wow. Position. And then yesterday, last night, he, he received the news that headquarters is sending a new assistant manager over. So he did not get that position. Oh. Uh, but, but, but the manager mentioned that uh, he, he, uh, headquarters is thinking of sending Adrian to another gym, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in another part of Vancouver. Um, and then the manager mentioned because there's no manager there. Oh. So, so then I told Adrian, I said, take it. I said, right. if you said there's no manager, you are the manager. Right. Uh, I'm not sure. No, just be sure. You're getting it. <laughs> take it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, so we are saying that whatever you thought was a disappointment in this particular place, because no. yeah. you were aiming for that position, but they sent somebody to fill it up already. But you just have to think of it that somehow there is a bigger opportunity at another location. Absolutely. So instead of just assistant manager, you might be aiming for a manager. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And he's already, he's already prepared. He just got to accept it. Yeah, so yeah. today, this morning, I kind of said him, I said, you, okay, so in your mindset, yeah, I'm the manager of the branch. That's it. I'm getting whatever I need. The universe is sending to me. Everybody's working with you, even the company. And then he was going to, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we will send him much, 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 much love and blessings on that and prayers. And we want, we want him to be that manager over that store because he is loving. He's ready. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, yes. And once he becomes the manager, he can buy his Tesla too. <laughs> <laughs> well, let him, start, let him start small first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> let, let it start small. Let it start with like a little BMW or something. No, the, the, the toy car, Tesla. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Melissa was saying <laughs> the hot wheels version. <laughs> Good morning, Melissa. How are you? Good morning. Good. Good. Uh -huh. Yeah, very really good. Oh, good. Good, 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 good. How's your week been? Mm. Oh, yes, it's been like a uh, roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, she's running. Uh, Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, this uh, this was, okay. yeah. Uh, yesterday I was in Palm Spring having an open house. Mm. And, and uh, the yard was full of weeds. So I couldn't stand it. I started. Digging in, you know, pulling the, the weeds. And then later on, uh, yesterday, uh, uh, a lady walk in. And it's so strange, Pastor. Uh, she, well, when she walk in, she said, you know, uh, I never met you, Melissa. We talk over the phone. Uh, this was like three months ago, four months ago. Mm -hmm. They, they, uh, they decide, they, they call in to ask about the house and then uh, they decided not to, uh, not to pursue it. Mm -hmm. And yesterday she said that every time she went into looking for a house, mm -hmm. my advertisement come out, that house continue to come out. <laughs> so she said she began to think that it is fated. <laughs> I was like, I was. She said, "Okay, so the price is lower, three hundred and forty-six. So, you know, she said it's actually three hundred and forty-eight. She said three hundred and forty-six. So yeah, let me check it out. <laughs> so she, she checked it out yesterday, you know, and then said, "Oh yeah," because her daughter was thinking that, "Oh, it is like maybe they just throw a paint, you know, they didn't do anything." I mean. The house wasn't done, it just paint, new paint and that's it. But when she checked in, she saw, oh yeah, it was a beautiful house. A lot of things have, uh, has been done on the property, you know? Mm -hmm. so, the, uh, so she said, okay. Uh, she said on Tuesday evening, she will bring the daughter to come and see the house because- mm -hmm. All right. You know? So then she said, every time she checked for the house in uh, realtor.com, my house continued to come up. 
That, that makes me like, oh wow. <laughs> That's a blessing. Yeah, it was it was it was so I love fun. the mysteries of the universe. I love the mysteries. Oh. So now we have two people interested. Yes. Right? Two families interested. See what happens when you stop shouting at the seed? Oh my god. <laughs> I have not been shouting at the scene, but it's just like, yeah. no, I've not been shouting. So, I know. Um, I mean, no, I've been, I have not been shouting for the scene like for two months already. A year we've okay. been talking about Palm Spring. Yeah, yeah. And then two, <laughs> uh, two months ago, I stopped shouting at it. I said, okay, I let it go, whatever. I, 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 I spoke to you about this. I said, I let it go. I don't care already. <laughs> Look at the watering. See? Water, water, water. And then, and then what happened was uh, that happens on that weekend. I think mm -hmm. is last weekend. Right. Do you when understand? I told you, when do I you told you, I said, I'm ready to hang the towel already. <laughs> now, do you understand what we say or when we talk about the law of attraction? Mm -hmm. This is the law of attraction. Look at what it's attracting. It's attracting a likeness unto itself. Every seed, every seed produces fruit of unlike unto itself. And this is what you're producing. But now you're producing it out of love because you're listening to the voice of love. <laughs> yes. So by threatening, by threatening to throw in the tower, does it help actually? Yeah. That's letting go. That's like, okay, I surrender. Mm -hmm. I sur okay. When you say throw in the towel, you are not, you're, you're getting out of step two. Yes. Oh, you're not meddling with the system. Right, anymore. right. You're letting God do his job. Yes. And then the lady walk in, the lady walk in after I said that, um, you know, the test is too hard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said I was in that situation. I said, "Oh God, the test is too hard." I said, uh, "Why this?" You know, because I have to be accountable to people, mm -hmm. and and that will, um, you know, well, I said, if I have to deal with it, then I have to deal with it. I don't mm -hmm. know. Okay, yes. so, so. Um, my friend told me that, you know, God will never give you something that you cannot handle. <laughs> I said, oh yeah, oh yeah. I said, okay, okay, tell me this. Okay, tell me this. If that's right, okay, tell me this. Now you know the situation, okay? Tell me how I should proceed with it. That's easy. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. Then, then, then. Then, and then once he said that, I start to see that, oh yeah, the, 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 because this guy, the guy that wanted to buy the house, he said, you know what, Melissa, he's sending me houses that is below, like, from starting from 200,000 to about 200 and 295. Mm -hmm. And I start to see that, then I see that. Wait a minute, all the houses that he sent me is already in escrow. Mm. So it's not available to him. Right. Huh. So why is he sending me this house? All these houses. So I called him, I said, okay, look. I said, look, the houses that you sent me, they're not available to you because they already were sold. It's in escrow. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, I'm thinking of buying it in a, a condo in the, in the downtown. Okay, if you're thinking of buying a condo, so this house is not for you. Right. Mm -hmm. This is not in down. Uh, it, this is not a condo. Mm -hmm. They said no, no. no it, uh, if the price, I said, and if you want to hold on to purchasing, thinking that the property market uh, is going to be in a buyer's market, I said no, that's not going to happen. Right. I said, mm -hmm. Property price continue to go go up steadily. Mm -hmm. Oh, if the price is right, uh, I want to buy. Okay. Okay, give me your pre-qualification letter. Let's go. Then let's sit down and I, I make a proposal to my seller. Right. Yeah. Mm. So that was it. I, I I really don't care. I don't care what it is. I just say it out. 
Surrender. <laughs> That's which is which leads us into the lesson because now you start to identify that voice that is love that guides you into the action that you're pursuing. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Everything had to come from that revelation and that discernment, which is the voice for love, which is in our lesson on page 325. The first question is, what does the voice for love sound like? What does it sound like? Because one, if people do not know who God is, how in the world can they obey the voice of God? You don't know God, how you know the voice of God? Mm. Mm. So we we used to tell um, we used to tell our people that uh, in our mind we have two two voices mm -hmm. uh, talking to us. If mm -hmm. if we ever want to think about a problem, usually we'll have two voices. One is uh, very harsh, critical, and uh, po probably um, what they call very loud. Mm -hmm. And the other one is usually very soft, mm -hmm. very loving, very gentle. And if you if you are not aware of it, you you you, 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 you missed it. Right. right. So right. the the loud one is actually coming from the ego, mm -hmm. and the soft one is actually coming from our inner self. We we call it our Buddha hood, Buddha nature, inner self. Or in this case, maybe it's our God in us. Right. When, you say, when you say Buddha nature, when you say higher self, when you say source, you're saying the same thing. Correct. Yeah. It's all so, the same. So that's how 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 I I that's my personal experience, and that's how I've been telling people. Absolutely, and this is where you begin to trust that voice that people call intuition. Yes. Because intuition comes from within you, outward to display the physical manifestation. But it starts from revelation first. The revelation comes from, is this the voice of God leading in my, me in my action? Because God only leads you in the voice of love. So am I in my loving thoughts where am I in fear, which is my ego? Mm -hmm. Am I in anger, which is my ego? Am I judgmental, which is my ego? Those type of things. So now I can distinguish the voice of love. Everybody can distinguish. And they, here's the beautiful thing. You don't have to argue about what the voice sounds like. Mm -hmm. It's your voice of love, which is God, to you personally on your level. Mm -hmm. Because Sudi's going to hear a different voice of love. Melissa's going to hear a different voice of love. I'm going to hear a different voice of love. But it still comes from the same love. Mm -hmm. We all tap in. And then when we all come together, we're all in love with one another. Now we can coexist in relationship. Now all of us are hearing the same voice and now we get to dance and yay. Mm -hmm. Now we're powerful when two or three are gathered in his name. Now the prayers are answered. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. So now who is God? Us. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And God is love. God is light. God is love. God is light. You are love. You are light. Mm -hmm. That's why you and the Father are one. Mm -hmm. This is why we push so hard to influence the connection between you and the Creator and not a separation. Buddha never separated himself from the Creator, Christ never separated himself from the Creator. Even um, Muhammad never separated himself from the Creator. The prophets and the priests never separated themselves from the Creator. They all became one with everything. That was the harmony because if love never fails, then love has to be the guiding force. So the voice of love, which is God, will influence the voice to say, don't go over there, danger, stand here. When I was a teenager, 
Everybody used to say, hey, come to the party, come to the party. My parents were very strict, so I had to be in the house at a, at a very early, early time. But in my spirit, I didn't want to go, but my ego wanted to go. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be in the in crowd, but in my spirit, I'm going, something's not going to, something's bad is going to happen. And then the next day, my friends would go, oh, man, we was at this party, and, man, the cops came in and raided us, and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And man, my parents had to come pick me up and all this other stuff. And I'm going, oh man, I'm glad that wasn't me because I would get killed for my parents, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it was to learn that voice of love and trust that voice of love and go, okay, I'm glad this happened for this particular reason, mm -hmm. you know? And that's where you begin to identify who God is. God is love. And when you look at love, that means this is created in love. This is created in love. Mm -hmm. These things are created and everything is created how? Out of love. When you create as a deliberate creator as God, you're creating out of love. Even when you're shopping, you're shopping in love, which is a creation of high joy. Mm -hmm. Satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> The shopping experience. <laughs> right, right. That's to help you out, Sudi. That way, when you swipe the card, you don't cringe. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. <laughs> You're multi-millionaire. You can swipe the card. It's, she won't, you won't go bankrupt, we promise. <laughs> <clears throat> and now it goes into how does the voice of love enter your Christ mind, your anointed mind? Mm. And this is where... I'm always teaching the preachers and the pastors and the bishops and all the religious teachers about when they read their holy scriptures, is this revelation from God of love and did you discern it from God of love to move in action to teach or be used for signs, wonders, and miracles? Does that make sense? So now revelation in other words you see the bracelets right mm -hmm. but if i cover it it's not revealed to you correct yes but you know it's there because you had a glimpse hint of it right yes mm -hmm. so now revelation only means i'm revealing a portion of what you need in the now to help you manifest what you're desiring mm -hmm. In other words, you can't handle all of it at once. Mm -hmm. It will pop your little brains out of your head. Mm -hmm. So when revelation comes in, it's kind of like when your children are doing something and that little boy says, okay, they're doing something they're not supposed to go. And then you come storming in the room and they go, how do you know? Mm -hmm. And your voice says, I told you they was in there doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. Or they try to hide the report cards or, or the teacher's note or, or being sick. Oh, I'm not sick. Because <coughs> they want to go play out. <laughs> our, our case was uh, Adrian. Adrian will pretend to be sick. So he <laughs> did not have to go to school. <laughs> to go to school right? and I know it. So I still bring him to the doctor and the doctor confirmed, mm, funny, he's not sick. <laughs> So, I, so in the end, then we question him. So, so what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> but revelation, that was the voice of love entering your Christ mind to say, no, that's not true. <laughs> without witness, mm -hmm. without evidence, mm -hmm. all from the spirit. And then your discernment was, here's what discernment, your discernment was, I'm understanding and I'm acting on it out of loving wisdom called knowledge. And I'm not judging it. Mm. Some parents would have been, oh, you're lying. Psh, 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 psh. Go to school. Mm. You look at Melissa. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Get out of that bed. Don't make me drag you out of that bed and drag you to the school. But you took the steps to, okay, I'm going to take you to the doctor. Uh -huh. and, and, let the doctor, and let the doctor say, confirm. Oh, that, confirm you were lying. <laughs> yeah. 
Now he's going, oh, I can't, I can't throw, I, I can't, I can't lie anymore because I'm busted because he's a, he's a doctor. Yeah. He's going to know. <laughs> but mom already knew while <laughs> driving in there going, mm, I know you can't fit. <laughs> but you're going to confess, I'm going to let you sit in the hot seat. I'm going to let you sit in the hot seat and sweat it out for a minute. Uh-huh. We're going to the doctor? Uh-huh. Really, mom? Doctor? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you got injection. <laughs> yeah. Then it gets really quiet because now, how do I get out of not going to the doctor but still be sick? <laughs> it's too late. It's too late. <laughs> Boxed it in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was revelation and discernment. Just like if you know your child is in danger, you'll know. You'll know, you'll know before anybody tells you. True story. When I was in the Navy, they tell us you cannot tell the port that you're going to for security reasons for um, security of the ship. And my mother found me in Italy in a club drinking. Really? Wow. And the bartender says in Spanish, is there a Senor Meekins here? Present them. <laughs> and I went. <laughs> you know, how do you know my name? And he says, your mother's on the phone. <laughs> Are you joking? <laughs> said, no, your mama is on the phone. Go we'll pick up the phone. Mom, how did you get this number? God got everybody's phone number. <laughs> I cannot make this up. In Ro- I was can I make it up in Italy? Call me. How she call. knows? Damn ways. Revelation and dis- revelation and discernment. She was connected to the voice of love. What is my baby doing? Because I'm concerned about his well-being. Mm. Yeah, but the exact nightclub and everything. The and- exact same. Don't ask me how. Yeah. I don't know. If she called, I don't know. If she might have called the ombudsman. I don't know. Mm. I couldn't. That's tell. How, yeah, that's why I tell my kids too, right? Don't, don't. Don't be up to something funny because you can run, but you cannot hide. I will find you. Right. And here you <laughs> on, my ship, on my ship that I was on was over 1,500 people. Yeah. You know how many bars are in a one city? Yeah. She called one bar. She didn't call a couple of bars. She called one bar. And she got it. One bar. How you know I was a... God got everybody phone number. I know where you always at. That's a problem. Six cents. I had to stop drinking. <laughs> I went back to the ship. Messed me up. <laughs> they do nothing. Oh God. Oh God sends your mother to go. Yeah. <laughs> On the phone. How you? Who does that? <laughs> well, that's when they had the AT and T prepaid phone cards back then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> when he got the prepaid phone call, the international. <laughs> call the number. Don't even know how she, to this day. Her only explanation was, God knows every phone book. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. I had to believe her and I sobered up. I sobered up right then. Oh. I'm still baffled on how you got my, how you get this number in this bar. Because there's 18 bars on this street. <laughs> yep. Call one bar. I was done. I, hey, I don't know who this woman is. She must be God. She must know God. She must have a connection with God. And everybody that was with me are laughing at me. Oh, your mama called the bar. <laughs> Now yeah, I'm humiliated because yeah. I'm going to my mama. She's like, your mama call. You want to get the number, dog? Man, she say, God got the phone number. Ah! <laughs> yeah. It's true. It is true. It's usually, 
it's usually your wife or what, you know? And it's your mama. Mama, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I was a believer that day. Mm. I had to go start doing some really study on how this woman did that. <laughs> Couldn't figure that one out. How do I connect with the voice of love? You surrender. You have to be willing. You have to be willing. Here's, here's how you know when you're connected is because you'll be in the vibration of the flow. Everything will be working out for you. Mm -hmm. It'll work out so fast where you'll go, Pastor, I was thinking about somebody and they, they text me or they call me. Yeah. Have, you ever, have that ever happened? Yeah. And that's when you know you're connected to the voice of love. That's love. Everybody is an extension of love. Regardless of what they're doing, we put labels on them good, evil. Love, hate. But if you just look at them in love, now you connect directly with that love. Even when you're depressed and God comes to give you that love that you need to get you undepressed, that's when you connect. Or you ever had a problem that you were trying to get the solution to and it didn't come for quite a while mm -hmm. and all of a sudden when you let it go, the answer came <laughs> Yeah. and you went, but didn't think about that. How'd the answer come? Mm -hmm. In the most weirdest places or awkwardest times? <laughs> yeah, just before I fall asleep. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Right. Because when you're falling asleep, you're going through the alpha, beta, gamma, theta. So you're going through the levels of releasing your free spirit and you're letting it go. Mm -hmm. And as you let it go, you're not pointing at the problem. Mm -hmm. Now you connect with the voice of love and now the answer comes. Mm -hmm. You're falling asleep. Or when you're scolding someone or whatever. Children, meaning children <laughs> and your affirmation the voice of unconditional love will guide me in my actions I am love and love is me uh, this is what page pastor 325 less than 725 very short lesson to be very quick oh pastor tomorrow I may be going to your home because oh. tomorrow evening i'm gonna connect with rochelle uh Good. you know then she it, you know after i hang up the call with uh with her she mm -hmm. right away called me she said hey melissa i was thinking maybe i should go there to pastor mickey it's <laughs> for a long time i've not been there i know i said yeah okay so what time the class start i said seven did it did it um then what time it ends? Like about nine? No, these days the class is very short. <laughs> We're gonna end at eight. Why? It used to be we stay so late. Yeah, because we're getting smarter now. She <laughs> laughed. She, <laughs> she laughed, you know. She said, Oh Melissa, you're so interesting. You say we're getting smarter. <laughs> because I said, Yeah, because now the students are smarter. <laughs> <laughs> that's a blessing thank you for that that is, that is good to hear and then she said oh yeah then you know she's not coming she said oh yeah um yeah it's good uh, meet me at two uh, at 5 p.m you know she said uh okay all right she's not coming <laughs> well, she, might, she might surprise you you never know yeah never know. yeah there's a reason uh, there's a reason why y'all still connect with each other even after y'all have finished your sales transition. Well, we okay, Pastor. Uh she knows that she can count on me. She also knows that <laughs> she needs somebody to talk to. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. And this is why this lesson would be really good for her. You know, and then she also said that because I told her, look, all right, you are going to retire soon from the school, from the teaching. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So what are you going to do after that? Right. But you still can work. Yep. So you have to do something about it. Absolutely. But she has, she has not been wanting to move forward. Right. So, so, so we're still, she, she, she's still there. <laughs> She'll get there. Well, we'll just we'll well come on over and our doors are open as always, and we welcome you. Okay, beloved and holy ascended masters, we come forth to abide with you in this lesson, not from a place apart from where you are, but from that place in which the sonship is joined as one. Where can that be but in the mind of God? Who is God but love? Therefore, in each moment, when any mind surrenders its identification with its illusion, when it surrenders its identification its own thoughts, with its own needs, with its own perceived desires, and rest in, into perfect silence, it rests into the voice of love, for love. It learns to ask only of that voice, what would you have me do in this moment? Remember, we always keep you in the what? Now. That way you don't overshoot or undershoot. More and more, the voice for love begins to inform the decisions, the thought processes, the visions, the revelation, and in your world, the action or behavior that is expressed through the temporary coalescing of energy into the illusion of a body. Beloved Sin and Master, we come forth from that place which is the voice for love. And if any mind can indeed rest in that place, it can only be that place is necessary within it. It is the depth of the soul. The depth is not an individual. It is the universal. It is eternal and is forever present. It knows no boundaries. It knows no time. It simply is love. So we abide in that place and we speak forth from that place of love. And if you will well receive it, if any time when you in your mind are struck by a truth of what is being shared, it is only because you have chosen in that moment to open up your own eternal access to the voice for love. What is triggered, what is activated or remembered is that part of you that is love itself. That part of self, the depth of the soul, that is for everyone with God. The great trick of evolution, if you would permit me to use such a term, is to grow the soul's awareness so that it rests in the depth of silence and yet does not need to withdraw or turn away from the expressions of creation to do so. That is, it need no longer judge the body. It need no longer judge the world. What you see around the body, it no longer strives to ascend to some spiritual height in which all things disappear, but rather, to the contrary, the soul in, in its maturity has ascended into union with the voice of God. Do you understand what that means? No. You and the Father are one. You're connected to God. You hear, you are, when you're so happy that you can't explain it, have you ever cried tears of joy? Mm -hmm. and explain it why? Mm -hmm. You were connected to the voice of love. You were connected to God. Now, if you can imagine on, on that energetic level, affinity fold, that emotion is God, love. So that love is almost uncomprehensible by human terms. But you know it because when you smile, when you smile, when you smile, when you smile, he said smile. You don't smile, he keeps uh -oh. saying smile. <laughs> <laughs> See that? <laughs> when you smile, think about it. Look at the feeling and the joy you're connected to God. Uh -huh. That's the voice. While you're laughing and playing with God, can you think of the problem? No. <laughs> Can you judge anything? <laughs> when you're playful with God, now you can use the five steps so easily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. No, I'm just saying why some people are so slow. They're not smiling. I was like, smile. <laughs> well, I had to go this way on, on Sudi. I had to go this way. <laughs> that way. <laughs> <laughs> Pastoring technology, oh my gosh. <laughs> 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 
But this is this is when you're playful for God. This is this is God having fun, satisfied and not satisfied. When you're not satisfied, you're not connected to God. There's the illusion that I'm separated from God and things that bring me joy. Make sense? Uh, where am I at? Uh, where? The great tree. Okay, go for it. But rather, oh, but rather to contrary, the soul in its maturity has ascended into union with the voice of God. That is, it has ascended into the depth of itself. It has learned to stabilize itself in the eternal silence. When we say eternal silence, this is where meditation comes into place. Quieting the minds from resistant thoughts. In other words, thoughts that does not serve you. Okay? It has through time experienced that process of transformation in which even the conscious mind is no longer thinking for itself, but is informed from the depth of the true self, the depth of the soul, the voice of love, God herself, Christ herself. In other words, that little voice that tells you, don't go left, go right. Mm -hmm. And then the people who go left go, man, I, I wish I would have what? Mm -hmm. Listen to that little voice. Mm -hmm. It's always the little voice. Mm -hmm. But notice how everybody hears that little voice. Do they use other terms? Other expressions? I, I would say my inner voice. Yeah, it's still a voice. Uh, six cents. Six oh, yeah. cents. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Which yeah. is your voice? Intuition. Intuition, absolutely. Absolutely. Or uh, inspiration, something that just out of the blue and then you just do it. Yep, revelation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the revelation. And then when you do it, that's the discernment of the action. In other words, the voice of love now guides my action. I've discerned, I've understood with knowledge out of love. When we say knowledge, knowledge is love. I understood out of love, knowledge. Now I know how to act on that voice that's guiding me. Now I trust when it says, don't go left, don't go left. Yes. Should we always listen to that voice? Oh man, yes. Oh, oh okay. Because oh, oh yes, yes, times, yes, yes. Many times this yes. thing happens. Let's say, let's say uh, something something uh, was banned, so I'm trying to ban it back. Mm -hmm. The the physical law is such that if you don't overban it slightly, it will not be fully straight. Correct. Correct. So how much must we overban the the thing, but yet not breaking it? So sometimes in my head, I'm going to say, okay, this should be enough. This should be enough. Should I try a bit more? Should I try a bit more? What happens if it breaks? And it does break. <laughs> well, here's, here's the thing. Whatever you do, be God doing it. Uh, if I want, in other words, what you're saying is, how do I keep the balance? Correct. How do I, I mean, keep I kind of like had the intuition, you know, maybe this is about the maximum I should do. I shouldn't try to bend it slightly more, but I didn't listen to it. So in the end, it breaks. That's the ego. Oh. <laughs> is that the voice of love or is that the voice of ego? The voice of ego says, doubt, 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 doubt. The voice of love says, trust me in the dark room, hold my hand and run full speed. Mm. Or put the blindfold on, grab the steering wheel, I'm going to sit in the passenger seat and you drive 100 miles an hour. And I'm going to tell you which way to go. Uh huh. Yeah. Really? That's off whatever yeah. the person is saying to you. Uh, nowadays, what I like is that when I'm having a conversation with somebody else, and usually we don't know where the conversation will go to. Mm -hmm. So, so but uh, I would let the, the other party speak talk, whatever she wants to say. And then after that, I would ask myself, I said, okay, so how, how can I help her? Or how, how can I, you know, change the situation? Or, or what advice can I give her? Right. And then the, the thing will come and I'll just speak it. Just like that. Revelation. Yeah. And usually it's on the door. And she will go like, how, how do you know that? I'm, 
I need this, you know, I, you're right, you know. Because you connect with the voice of love. The voice of love, which is God, knows everything. Mm-hmm. All knowledgeable. That's why you're able to go in and get, like a computer, a CD-ROM, if you will, go in and get that information and give it to them, and it'd be spot on. Mm-hmm. And they go, how do you do that? It's to the point where it almost scares them. Yeah. It really does. They, they're like, how you, who, told, who told you that? Mm-hmm. How do you know that? Where'd you get that answer from? They they forget what, what it is because now they're so concerned on how you got it. Yes. Yeah. True. Temporarily. Yeah. And, and it's but always on the dot, right? Yep. And even I I most of the time I'm very surprised too at what I say because I wasn't thinking, it's just the thing came in and I just spit it out, right? So I'll be watching the, the, the reaction from <laughs> because you surrender, you've learned here's a here's a beautiful thing about you and connecting with God. You have learned intuitively how to let go and surrender at that moment, get it, download it, give it to them and in a way where they can process it. Mm. And then you don't respond until after the fact. How do I know that? Yes. I, I wouldn't say that. I'll say after that. After, after, what I'm saying is after the fact, you begin to question where that information come from where it was so accurate to this person who only in this very, 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 very short amount of time gave me the problem. Mm. Instantaneously gave them the answer. So it's good, right? That's perfect. Because do you think they'll come back and trust you? Yeah, they keep yeah. coming. Absolutely. You're going to be the number one, hey, Got a problem. No, you got the answer. You become the go-to because what happened is you begin to plant the seeds of love. Now, as they begin to trust you, they begin to trust their inner self, their inner God, their inner Buddha, their higher self, source creator, all of the above. They begin to trust that and begin to start speaking it for themselves. Now, they graduate where now they don't have to call you anymore because now they're doing it on their own. And then they'll get their own students. Mm-hmm. They'll get revelation and give it to someone. Okay. And so it, it yeah. is correct to empty, empty yourself because that's, that's where the ego will disturb you. So you kind of neutral and that's then what, you need the thing to come in and you just let it out. Right. That's what we mean by surrender. That's what we mean by neutrality. That's what we mean by letting it go. That's what yeah, we mean by yourself. Yeah, but sometimes you feel that you're just like a robot, isn't it? In you are the- you are under the influence of God. Oh. That's all. In other words, you surrender and become one with God, and then now God speaks and give God answers. Because God has spoken. Oh my God. <laughs> People come to you because they, one, are drawn to you by a law of attraction, and two, intuitively because of that attraction, because they know you have the answer. Why do you think when you're in the line of the grocery stores and all of a sudden the person in front of you or behind you begins to dump all their problems on you in that short amount of time while you're trying to check out? (laughs) How many have you had that happen to? Yeah. And you begin to go, why is this person telling me all their business and I don't even know their first name? So we have it all the time. <laughs> all the time. And then all the time, you instantaneously get revelation and give it to them. And instantly, in that short amount of time, you gain a, a good friend, soulmate, who you've given an answer to, to their problem. Now they're skipping along happy. And you're going, ugh, ugh, why me? All the time in the line, in here, in the most awkward mind, when I'm trying to mind my own business, I'm not trying to think about you and your problem. I got my own problem. <laughs> Lily, you remember when we were in Canada, in North Canada, <laughs> when the lady started talking to you and you, start, when you started crying with her? <laughs> yeah. Remember that one? Oh, we saw that one. Was it in Prince George? Yeah, that lady. 
Yeah. She she has a hard life all her life, remember? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, just to clarify, Pastor McGinn, I wasn't the only one crying, huh? I know she was crying too. <laughs> yeah, you were crying. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you were saying, you were saying, I don't know why. When I'm close to her, I feel like crying. <laughs> I, I wasn't crying. It's just the tears keep it coming up. It was tears of love. Tears of compassion. No, this woman, the, the energy is very sad. Well, that's on your fault. <laughs> mm. See? Sure. That ain't her fault. That's your fault. We always say you walk into a room, who energy wins? Yeah. Outside or inside, it does not matter. When you come in contact or in that radius, what energy wins? Yes. Mm. So so during that time, the, the, the woman's energy wins and, and all of you go yeah, into I her, her <laughs> Other than if you win, maybe you lift her to the happier mode. That's, that's what should have happened. You crying with her and it didn't help her at all. <laughs> Just to know. Oh, no. Initially, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, initially we, we, she was telling us about her life story. She was actually telling me about her life story. So I called Lily. Lily said, yeah, she feel like crying <laughs> when with her. Okay. Then, then, Later when, they on. Tell you, when they tell you the sad stories, you tell a better feeling story because they have practiced and have picked up a habit okay. of telling that sad story to gain empathy, sympathy, mm -hmm. emotion. Now, she's a vampire. I mean, people, she doesn't suck her veins in and make, oh, God, we just feel so on fire. And nobody prayed for this woman and lifted her up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you should have told her, well, at least she ain't dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Need to stop that story. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Because I do believe that she has been telling those stories to like everybody that she met. Everybody heard that. She's, she didn't perfected that story. Ooh. It became the basis of her life. Yes. Wow. Tell it so good that she put all the emotions and all the sad details and all everything into it. <laughs> and then she's talking, she laying it on thicker and thicker and thicker, and you just receiving and receiving and receiving. And now you're lower and lower and lower. Now you gotta go, now you gotta go pick yourself up on her sadness, and that ain't your story. Oh, you know, I had nothing to do with you, and you lied. <laughs> The only thing that I did, I did uh, right was I I pass out tissue, tissue, the box of tissue, and everybody kind of shared it. And I said, okay, enough, cut it off. <laughs> that looks like you're good. You give tissue, <laughs> and everybody's crying. So cut it off. <laughs> because. Nobody felt good, did they? Nobody felt good. Yes. You were happy all of a sudden. <laughs> Tell the story you begin to. <laughs> no, Pastor, I was really thinking, okay, how can a person's life be so terrible, you know, uh, like nothing that she does is good, you know. She would have told and... me she ain't dead. Huh? She would have said, I wish I was dead. Then start telling that story and see how far that goes. She won't tell a dead <laughs> story. So she, so, so, I, I mean, this is beyond me, you know, so I was just thinking, so I hope that through the blessing that she got that day, her life will improve, you know, and uh, later on we heard, we heard the story because she, she is the, like, the mate of um, an Indian lady, and this Indian lady, seems to be has power reach you know mm -hmm. so she was actually taken care of by this indian lady so i was then i was then uh i really hope that after that blessing that we give her that her life will start to improve that the lady will because the the must i mean her employer so-called uh uh also received the blessing so uh, i hope that some some type some kind of um, uh, 
You know, you, uh, some some type of. I mean, she will see her conscience. She get back her conscience, and she will treat her 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 so called her employees well. Right. You know. Hopefully. Yeah. What I've learned it takes it takes people time to change their old behaviors and their old habits. Yeah. Of course. You change overnight. So baby steps. Yeah. But but that's a great story. But look how how easily and how quickly energies changed. Very quickly. Mm-hmm. So we always try to encourage you to be at the highest level of vibration, which connects you to God's love. Now, when you meet people who try to tell you the sad story, you help them tell a better feeling story on the tro- story they told. Now they see God's love. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. They're going to resist you on it. They're going to fight you on that because they perfect. They perfected that story. How dare you come and change the story? To a better feeling story. How dare you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Don't you know I want people to feel sorry for me because this is the only attention I think I can get? Yes. Oh. Yes. Because I didn't get it either at home or from my husband or from my kids or from my grandma or from whatever. Mm-hmm. Now, Life is so hard for me. But I, I, but I really, Pastor, uh, I, I see that there's, um, when people start to tell the God story, but uh, they really attract a lot of attention. You know? Yeah, that's what they want. And guess how many people sit around and listen to that story, and all of a sudden, how many sad people do you have? Now, know. Remember we talk about the Weber relationship? Uh-huh. We see Avery Webb creates similar discs like the seed, it reproduces. So now that disc is now broken because of sadness. Now look what all the people did after they left. Do you think they spread it joy or sadness? Sadness. They, now they went and told all their sad stories because they couldn't tell this lady's story. Yeah. So now I'm going to tell a sad story because I heard her story, but I'm going I'm to include her story as a catalyst to tell a sad story. Mm-hmm. When I know in my body it does not what? Feel good. And now you're in conflict with that voice because now the ego has taken over and now the voice of love cannot get in. So now you're listening to the wrong voice, that body. So now the spirit doesn't lead, the mind doesn't follow, mm-hmm. but definitely the body's in control. <laughs> okay. Yes. And here's, here's, here's the quickest thing to do with people like that. Let them tell their sad story and then pray a happy prayer for them. You mind if I pray with you? Mm, okay. If they don't receive prayer, you mind if I pray for you? Mm. They can't stop you from praying for them. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't want you to pray for I'm going to pray for you anyway. Can't tell me what to do. <laughs> So yesterday, yesterday at the car dealership, I mean, there, there are people working, doing the paperwork, right? So one of the, one of the women was uh, telling my friend that, you know, who is this? Is this your sister or your relative? And she said, no, it's my friend. You're very lucky, you know, your friend is here to help you. Right. And she said, yeah, she's my best friend. You know, she's the best person you can ever find. <laughs> yeah, of course. When you help these people out, they're your best friend. <laughs> but I was just feeling that we're just accompanying her, right? Right. And that's all she needed. That's she needed some support. Yeah. That's all. She needed support. Yeah. And she, she felt that uh she said uh we, we look like the, the, the confident kind of uh, rich people that will go in and just buy a car. So she said, So it must be you. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> She smells 11.5 million on you. No, <laughs> oh, it's true. Yeah, I said, um, no, we don't really buy car. We just lease car. Right. And she was going like, well, leasing is not cheap too. It means like you do that very often. So come, come. You have a lot of experience. <laughs> she needed that support. That's yeah. all. And that's a blessing. So we, we did good yesterday. Very good. All right. Any questions, comments, concerns as we close? No, no. All right, let's pray out. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. We thank you for just waking us up this morning to be in our right frame of mind, body, and spirit. 
We thank you for your hedge of protection around us as we slept through the night and your hedge of protection around us as we go forward in this day. We thank you for using us for signs, wonders, and miracles, our gift and our talents. We thank you for blessing over our neighbors, our neighborhood, and those less fortunate than ourselves, the homeless, the sick and shut-in. We thank you for all the churches in the world. We all teach and preach the same thing to be in one accord. There be no division amongst us. We thank you, Lord, for so many things. We cannot thank you enough. We thank you for our abundance, our prosperity, our health, and our wealth. We thank you for these things, and as our prayer, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. All right. Love you all. You have a blessed one. I will see you tomorrow. Okay, Pastor. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you all.